Hello everyone, and welcome to Ann Sleep. My name is Tommy Licatese. I have the pleasure of speaking with speech pathologist Samantha Weaver. Today we'll be discussing speech development and sleep. Welcome to the show, Samantha. Thank you. So what are some of the considerations and growth and development of the oral cavity that parents should be aware of in their children? Well, I think parents need to understand growth begins in utero. So the way the baby comes into the world and really understanding how that oral cavity is shaped is going to impact breastfeeding, which is incredibly important in terms of the soft tissue and hard structures of the oral cavity. So when the baby is born, assessing for a high narrow palate, really trying to understand if that does exist, assessing the tongue, because the tongue will have driven the shape of the palate in utero. And then once the baby is able to latch, is it, is it an optimal latch? Because the breastfeeding is really driving most of this growth and development. And of course, there are considerations where babies cannot breastfeed. They have to bottle feed. The structures that we're putting into the oral cavity, including pacifiers, bottles, those are gonna have a direct impact on the shape of the palate, which is the base of the nose. And as the teeth come in, is there enough space between those teeth? And if there isn't, then you have to start to think about why is that happening? Is it a oral breathing issue? Is it something where the tongue is being held down? So that kind of understanding early on can have a huge kind of launching pad for the entire child over the trajectory of that early child development. Um, so what can parents do um, to help promote proper growth and development? Well, one thing that I think is very culturally relevant is um, even the use of pacifiers. Um, of course, if a baby is born preterm, they've actually skipped out on this phase of development that is about increasing the sucking action in utero. <clears throat> so if a baby is born preterm, the pacifier is used to accelerate and develop the suck and swallow functions, which are critical to survival. But what about a full-term baby? They, we don't need to give that full-term baby a pacifier unless they need more self-regulation, but then you need to pull that pacifier out because, again, the consequence is reduced muscle function, smaller oral cavities, and eventually that's going to create this smaller airway for chewing, swallowing, and eventually an increase in sleep disorders. So what are the consequences of untreated intraoral soft tissue, muscles and mastication on sleep and breathing for children? Well, eventually the advanced disease state is obstructive sleep apnea. And so the consequence is huge, even neurologic. You know, the baby and child grows between zero and five years old. The brain is growing exponentially. So you have to think, if there is any disruption in airflow, that is going to reduce the amount of oxygen to the brain, muscles, and tissues, and that's going to have a cognitive impact as well. And so the child that shows up as being hyperactive or not having focus, or maybe they're being treated for ADHD, you have to think, what's happening at nighttime in particular? Is that child sleeping and getting into the deeper stages of sleep? Because if they're not, they're in a sympathetic response to the environment, and that can have an impact on the brain function itself, even IQ points can be diminished, and eventually that profile of that child being behaviorally uh, difficult. There's a label that gets slapped on. So we really want to help support parents to identify what's happening during sleep, because the oral structures are going to either create an optimal area for breathing, or that child is going to be fighting against everything it can in order to breathe. 
And so how can proper or improper growth and development of the jaw affect dental arch formation um, and, and facial formation? Well, there are a lot of influences, of course. We know that soft tissues impact bone development. And there's this rule called the Moss Functional Matrix. And what it means is the muscles themselves and the pressure are going to create and grow bone. So where your tongue is, is actually going to directly influence the shape of the palate. And if there isn't enough space for the teeth, then you get dental crowding. And then in other areas, you may think of the soft tissue holding the jaw back, either the top jaw or the lower jaw. So we see a lot of cases where the parents, they come in for speech issues because the child is lisping or they're creating sounds um, like instead of saying the p sound, which is a bilabial lip together sound, they're saying v, v. But why are they saying that? They're saying that because the jaw, the lower jaw is more forward than the top jaw. So then you have to think what's causing that top jaw not to grow forward. And you really want to get in there and develop the face coming forward. And I'm not a dentist, I'm a speech pathologist, uh -huh. I do myofunctional therapy, but that's where this interlap around dental formation and all these other functions really are important to understand. And it's important for parents to understand. And so for, yeah, for parents that now are understanding these things, where, where, do, they, where do they go? How do they start um, getting their children help? Well, it can be so confusing for parents. So what I always say is that if you suspect your child has disrupted breathing at night, they're showing signs of hyperactivity, maybe they're drooling, is their, out, is their mouth open? You know, one thing to look at are the tonsils and adenoids. And unfortunately, this isn't always a surefire linear pathway. I have a lot of parents who've seen an ENT and they assess the tonsils, but there was a wait and see approach. And one child in particular who I've treated, he was assessed seven times by different ENTs. And until he came to us as a myofunctional therapist, then we connected him with a dentist who understood airway and function. And then we said, go to the ENT and say, I suspect a sleep breathing problem because that's gonna help the ENT understand the severity of why these tonsils may be needed to take out. And of course, beyond that, a sleep study is always gonna be recommended and one of the best ways to get the data to really see what that looks like. Great, thank you for coming onto the show. You're so welcome. The sleep professionals in this video series teamed up with Whole U to spread healthy sleep education across America and were paid for their appearances.